Building launchers are always a tough task every year round, but this year it's both easier and tougher depending on who you ask, and some of the challenges along the way are kind of strange. Today we're breaking down the bazooka and the launcher challenges to let you know the easiest ways to get these done and the most efficient ways to do it as well. As we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. How are you guys liking the camo grind so far? Is there any weapon in particular you want to see broken down next or weapon category? That being ARs, SMGs, snipers, whatever the case, feel free to let me know down down below. We'll of course have a gold camo guide for our primary weapons coming on the channel as we normally do, but I wanted to give some insight into the launchers for those that may be having a tough time with those initially. If you enjoyed the video, if you find it at all insightful, drop a like down below. Let's aim for 2,000, maybe 3,000 likes on this video. And of course, if you are new to the channel and want to stay with all things Vanguard, hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to half a million subscribers and with nearly 60% of viewers not subscribed. If you'd like to join the community and stay up to date with all that, I'd love to have you. That said, let's jump into it. So let's start out with some basic information here. Firstly, while the camo challenges for the launchers are still annoying and more so tedious than anything else, this actually might be the easiest of years in recent years for the launchers, or at least on paper. No double kills or anything like that, and perhaps best of all, the weapons are actually completely different in two areas as opposed to other primary weapons that you'll encounter within Vanguard. Number one, they're already max rank from the get-go. I never really considered it in years prior, but this actually makes so much more sense. I mean, you rank up weapons in the past and in Vanguard for attachments to rank those up and get better pieces of equipment. But for the launchers, melees, and shield, you never really had to do that because you never got attachments for them. So why would you need to rank it up? Like I said, launchers are maxed this year right out of the gate, and their max rank is that total huge grind worth of XP of weapon level one. So you can quite literally jump in and use the weapon and start completing camo challenges from the moment that you unlock it, which is huge by comparison to any other year. Number two, camo challenges also normally across Vanguard stretch 10 different categories of challenges with 10 challenges each, right? Well, launchers and melees only have five since they don't need to be ranked up to get gold. So you have approximately half the challenges as the primaries or secondaries in the game, which is so much better for efficiency. Now, when it comes to these launchers, you have the challenges this year in five different categories categories. Pack Tactics, this is your standard eliminations requiring you to get a total of 100 eliminations. This can be actual kills or if a player finishes them off for you. Surgical requires you to destroy 100 enemy kill streaks, equipment, or field upgrades. Predatory Ambition requires you to destroy 50 ground streaks or field upgrades. Reptilian requires you to destroy 50 aerial kill streaks, and Deadeye requires you to destroy three enemy kill streaks in one game 30 times, which admittedly I actually think is the most annoying challenge out of all of them. I'll expand on that in a little bit when we go in depth with each category, but let's talk about some tips on how you can complete these a little easier. Pack Tactics, well, again, because it's in Eliminations this year, this is incredibly easy. I only didn't finish this challenge first because I was so gung-ho on completing the other ones, but with kills and assists counting towards your Eliminations this game, that actually made it such a breeze. I jumped into Blitz and I think I completed all of them in about five to six games or something like that, so just make sure you have it on your class, and if you're really going for it, use it as a primary to make sure you get enough each match. Surgical, honestly, this one just completed in time when you focus on the other challenges, so I can't really give specific tips for this challenge category because it's basically all just the tips we'll touch on with the remaining three here. Now, Predatory Ambition, admittedly, this one actually took me longer than the aerial streaks. And would you guys believe me if I actually said that those aerial streaks were the first ones that I completed? which that surprises me. But anyways, for Predatory Ambition, you have two categories of destructions you can do because you're going for those ground streaks and those field upgrades. Now, the ground streaks, that doesn't include much. A lot of the streaks actually aren't really that great in terms of launchers, but for ground streaks, that includes guard dogs, flame knots. I haven't been able to test to see if the death machine counts. I only have run into that one or two times total, and they were dead by the time that I reached them. But the interesting part that is that also counts with dogs, the pack of them at 10 kills. But the kicker is that each dog counts as a tick towards that challenge. So if you end up finding three or four and take them all out, you're golden. That's three or four towards this challenge right there. So it's a nice little bit of progress for one singular game. The only downside is that the dogs are not one hit with rockets. So they're a two hit and with only two rockets per life, well, you got to get crafty with it. Two rockets for one kill, shoot one and then kill one with a rocket, damage one with a rocket and melee with a rocket out. You see what I mean? Now, for your field upgrades, this one's a little bit more in terms of amount of things you can take out, but still also something you might have a tough time finding. These including supply boxes, goliaths, jammers, deployable covers, field mics, and tack inserts. But you don't see many people placing these or using these at all sometimes. 
Fair warning though, also Goliaths and Jammers are two hit kills as well, so prep accordingly. For this, I would highly recommend running Engineer as I would also for Aerials, just making it easier to see those. But I do kind of wish that the markings with Engineer was a little bit brighter and a little bit more defined at distances, but it definitely does help greatly finding them versus without having it. I couldn't imagine searching for an ammo box or something like that on some maps with a ton of debris. So this will help highlight that in red. And then if you mark it in a sort of yellow, orangish hue, and then all you have to do is send it with your rocket. As for reptilian, these, those pesky aerial streaks, these count for recons and counter recons. And I would also imagine things like your strafe runs, your bombing runs, both the actual bombing run and the fire bombing run, though good luck shooting those down with the speed at which rockets travel in this game versus how fast they come in. Fun fact that you can actually pretty easily shoot down a bombing run with your actual gun, but recons and counter recons are probably going to be your primaries here. Recons though are always going to be one hit while counters, those have hit markers at the tail and are one shots at the nose of the plane. But the real issue comes down to lead time. I'm sure that's probably one of the biggest things you have an issue with as well. I don't have any actual stats on hand to tell you meters per second in terms of rocket velocity or how far away the planes are from the ground to kind of calculate that, but it comes down a lot to the feel. Realistically, when I started these, I missed a ton before I ever hit my first one. And then once I did, it kind of clicked immediately. I tried exactly that same distance that I did beforehand, and sure enough, it worked. The feel for the lead is really all it comes down to. For the bazooka, the weapon we got gold here for this guide, on the majority of the maps, I found that if you line it up about equidistant from the center of the iron sight to then where the outside of the iron ring is from the plane in your viewpoint, that would be relatively what you'd need for it to lead when already called in. And that's also something that's important to differentiate because both the recon and counter recon come in at entirely different speeds. They come in much faster than when they make their initial pass around the map, which kind of sucks because it does actually limit the amount of time you have to shoot it down because while it's flying in that's already relaying intel or blocking your radar so i find it easier to wait until it would be that circling pass and the wing is dipped towards the map but also at that point it's probably a quarter of the way done so you'd have roughly like two to three tries before it flies away so make sure you line it up again about equidistant from that center iron sight from what the outside of the ring is towards the plane then give it a go make sure you're lined up though in terms of actual height too that's kind of just a given you're only leading it more so forward. But one thing that is nice is that if you do fire off like this, it doesn't have to be exact. The hitboxes with recons for sure are definitely forgiving and counter recons also have some forgiving hitboxes, but not as much as regular recons. Fun fact, if you're actually quick enough, sometimes you'll even see two planes for one announced recon. I'd imagine that's to deal with recon stacking, but not 100% sure. Could just be a bug giving a free recon. But that then brings us to the final category of these camo challenges, that being Deadeye. This requires you to destroy three killstreaks per match 30 times. Now, this, I said, is probably the most annoying challenge that we had here for this, because unlike years in the past, we can't stack these. So if you really get the hang of this, just start to get in the flow and you can take out multiple aerial kill streaks in one single game. Let's say you get six. That doesn't count for two towards this challenge. Instead, it still only counts for one. So that's something that is different this year. And I don't know if that's a bug or by design, but right now that's the way it is. Now, one thing that can kind of work around here with this is that if you join up into a game, you complete these three aerial kill streaks, you get that challenge credit, you can actually immediately back out and then queue up again to find another match. This year's camo challenges and things don't require you to finish out a match for those stats and challenges to track. Instead, they're logged instantaneously, and as soon as you complete it, you can back out and still have all that progress saved. So definitely nice, but I do hope that they fix that in the future here where you can stack them because that makes things way easier for efficiency. Though I will say that if you do have another class that does have a different launcher on it, definitely switch to that so you can get credit for maybe two, three, or maybe even all four launchers in a single game if you have that opportunity. But anyways, that is the challenges for the launchers and the bazooka in particular. Now, overall, I would highly recommend to do these early. This is something that launchers every single year earlier, the better, because more people are going to be running every kill streak. There are going to be less people running things like your flak jacket equivalent this year fortified. And it's just something that makes it a lot easier to get the more so stressful and tedious ones out of the way first and foremost. So you can just enjoy the rest of the grind along the way if you're going for things like atomic and that mastery camo. Additionally, there's not many fuel 
build upgrades or streaks. So take advantage of them while people are using them and before others figure it out. Things like that it is easier once you get the hang of it to shoot down some of these aerial streaks. So you don't have many people really fighting for those aerial streaks with you in a single match. Also kind of a note is that I do know that some of these challenges are bugged. The MK11, those long shots don't register at all. That's probably gonna be something that is fixed out here in the next couple of days. But for right now, maybe progress one of these other launchers beforehand. Camo challenges also can be subject to change. So maybe if you catch this video a few weeks down the road, maybe some of these are changed, maybe in the amount of quantity required, or maybe just entirely changed overall. Maybe we don't have long shots for the MK11 anymore or something similar. But that's where we're gonna wrap it up. So I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. How are you guys doing with the camo grind if you're going along with it? You have any gold guns so far? Make any progress on the launchers or the melees, perhaps? Whatever the case, let me know down below. But hopefully you found this insightful. Hopefully it helped you out in some way, shape, or form. If it did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel and want to step today with all things Vanguard here, we have a ton of stuff still coming. More camo guides, more helpful tutorials, class setups, and things like that along the way. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you guys are new and want to step today with all of that. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to chat with me outside of YouTube. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever the case may be, links in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.